if you enjoy this little uh, complimentary video on my Hakuro Machak broke, this is the end of my life, then make sure to support the channel on Patreon such that I can buy myself new chalk because it's breaking all the goddamn time. <sighs> A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow everybody, and welcome back to another video. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to check out my newly founded shop, stemrich.eu. There I'm selling handcrafted goods like headphone stands and integrity toys. Check it out, link in the description, stemrich.eu. Thank you very much. So, a few days ago, I posted a continuation of how real men solve equations. It was called how real men do fractions and there I was turning one eighth into the decimal expansion in a kind of weird but pretty sexy way if you ask me. Um, and many people didn't know what I was doing there and they requested another explanatory video about this topic and this is what we are going to talk about today. You can find the how real men video down there in the description and at first I'm going to explain the method to you. It's basically just um, kind of rigorous long division or just the justification of long division other than using the uh, Euclidean algorithm basically and yeah this is basically all that's behind it and we are going to talk about a few examples where you can uh, apply it basically too. And now we are going to dive right in and I hope you are going to enjoy the video. So at first let us take a look at the number one eight. And in the whole Riemann video, I noticed that 1 8th is less than 1. I mean, it's pretty easy to see that it's less than 1. And since it's less than 1, it's going to be of the form O dot digit, 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 digit concatenated up until the nth or infinite digit, basically. And what I supposed is that we can write this 1 8th in terms of, of a digit representation for the decimal expansion. Namely, it's just the first digit, which is obviously going to be equal to zero, dot digit one, concatenated with digit two, concatenated with digit three, up until the digit n, and in the normal case, each and every um, fraction has an infinitely repeating decimal expansion, okay, meaning we can write dot dot dot. And infinitely many decimals also means that it can have infinitely many zeros okay at the very end repeating all the time now this right here also holds for numbers like um, nine fifths okay but then you need to be a bit more careful with the digits in the front this method is going to work either way you just need to have more digits in the front uh, other than that now what we are going to do is we are going to rewrite this thing as the sum basically of um, n many terms up until this point or infinitely many terms, whatever you prefer. Meaning this right here. So this is in the first place. Meaning it's in the one place, so this is the naught times one. And one is the same as 10 to the zeroth power. Then what we're going to add to it is digit number one, multiplied with this right here is in the tenths place. Meaning it's d1 times 10 to the negative 1 power. Now we are going to continue this process plus d2 times 10 to the negative squared plus dot 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 up until well the nth digit or infinite digit whatever you prefer meaning it's the n 10 to the negative nth power and so on. This is how you can represent um, basically decimal number and as mentioned before, if you have a number like 27 over mm, 5, for example, then you also have terms like the digit before d0 times 10 to the first power, then the digit before that times 10 squared, and so on. It really depends on which place you actually have. Meaning we can rewrite this right here in a very compact sum notation, where this right here is, uh, that's a very ugly sigma interpreter, sorry. This is the sum from i being equal to zero in our case. We are going to start with zero in the running index to n of our di times 10 to the negative i power. Yeah, and this is what it actually looks like. And now we are going to start to solve for our problem 1 8 right here. And what we are going to do is we are going to multiply both sides by 8 because it's not equal to 0 on the one hand. And on the other hand, what we can do then is compare the number 1 to the right hand side, meaning the right hand side needs to add up to some kind of integer overall meaning 1. So by multiplying both sides by 8, we are going to get that 1 must be equal to 8 times d0 times 10 to the 0 of power is going to give us um, 8 d0 plus. And now we got d1 times 8 times o dot 1, which is going to give us d1 times o dot 8. 
and so on. Next up is D2 times 0 0.08 and then plus D3 times 0 0.008 plus dot 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 up until the nth or infinite digit. Now what we are going to do is we are now going to find out how often does each and every digit fit into our number one basically when multiplied with the leading coefficient that we got right here. Now one thing you need to know about digits is and this is the only reason why this method is going to work is that they are bounded between 0 and 9. Digits take the form 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up until 9. Meaning for this method to actually work we also need to say that I mean it's obvious from the context if you ask me that our di's must all be bounded between 0 and 9. And now we can start finding out if any of the numbers from 0 to 9 does fit into our 1 when plugged into the digits and being multiplied by the coefficients that we got here. So d naught multiplied by 8. Is there any number inside of this interval which does um, give us 1 for example if we multiply d naught by 8? No, obviously not. 8 is greater than 0. All of these numbers are greater or equal to 0 meaning no number multiplied by 8 is going to give us 1 in the process. Meaning our zero of digit, our leading digit before the decimal point is going to be equal to 0. Meaning overall 1 8 takes the form of O dot something. Okay, remember this is what 1 8 looks like. Now next up, D1 times O dot 8. How often does O dot 8, okay, maybe you see the, the similarities to, to long division, how often does something fit into the other something, okay? How often does 0 dot 8 fit into our number 1? I mean one time obviously, hence D1 must be equal to 1. So 1 8 at this point is O dot 1 in some way. Now we got O dot 8 now, meaning 1 is something like O dot 8 plus. Now O dot 2 is still left, meaning how often does uh, O dot 8 fit into O dot 2? I mean okay one time definitely so 8 then 16 so this gives us 1 dot 1 6. Oh, uh, 0.16, I'm terribly sorry, meaning it fits two times into our 0.2 which is still left, okay? Meaning plus 0.16 and this gives us 1.8 is equal to 0.12. Now all that's really left is, okay, 0.8 plus 0.16 is going to give us 0.96. This is kind of nice, okay? This is uh, turned around nice. I mean what is still left is the number, okay? The only thing that we need is 0.04. 4 in some way. How often does 0 0.008 fit into 0 0.04? I mean one time obviously. 8, 16, so this gives us 0 0.016, hmm, still not there yet. 3, 2, 4, then 3, 3, 2, ah, oh, 5 times, 5 times. If we multiply 5 times 0 0.008 we are going to get 0 0.04, the last thing which is still missing. Meaning our last digit must be equal to 5 and then we are done. This right here is the answer for 018. And you see this method is working and seems kind of ridiculous but I am um, using this method on a regular basis to find out in my head, I'm, I'm using this in my head most of the time, to find out um, what the decimal expansion of a number actually is. Don't add me, don't add me please. Yeah, this right here is how it works. Now let us take a look at another example. For example, what about repeating decimals? I mean, um, oh yeah, uh, by the way, if you are wondering, we still have a lot of digits left, okay? I mean, none of these digits fits into our number anymore, meaning all the digits that we got right here from D4 to Dn must be equal to zero, meaning or to D infinity for n being equal to infinity going to infinity, we are going to get the infinitely re repeating string of decimals um, zero, um, digit zero. Yeah, just as a little reminder. Now next up we are going to take a look at an easy example. For example what about one third? Okay, once again we are going to say that one third is of the form d naught dot blah blah blah. d naught dot d1 d2 blah blah blah. Now what we are going to do, okay just remember we are going to multiply both sides by 3 giving us that 1 must be equal to, okay so we get 3 times d naught plus and then we got o dot 3 times d1 plus o dot o3 d2 plus dot dot dot. Now we can go ahead and start the process once again. Does the 3 fit into our 1 when multiplied by some kind of digit? No it does not, meaning our leading digit must obviously be equal to 0. So 1 third 
is something of the form zero dot. Now we're going to continue. Zero dot three, how often does it fit into our one? I mean one, two, three times, giving us O dot nine. And this is, uh, D1 must be strike through. This is the point <clears throat> where I need to be careful now. Now you are going to notice a certain pattern here. If you basically get the remainder of one out yet again, the, the number that you get here just move by a certain number of decimal places, then you are at a repeating decimal once again. You are going to notice this because at this point we get 0 0.9, meaning what is still missing is 0 0.01. And no, 0 0.1 is still missing. Meaning, basically, this is just a 1 being moved by one decimal place. And this is basically the same behavior that, that we got here. We needed to reach 1 using 0 0.3 in some way. Now we need to reach 0 0.1 using 0 0.03. And if that happens for a certain number, you're going to get a repeating decimal expansion. This is just how it works. This is just a a pattern that you are going to notice at some point. And it's going to become clear when looking at the next number, 0 0.03, how often does it fit into 0 0.1? I mean three times yet again. So D2 must be equal to three. And so on, same thing for D3, etc. Meaning you are going to get a repeating decimal expansion right here. Now let us take a look at one last example and then we are basically done. I don't know, let me think of a number. Let's say um, <laughs> eight over seven is kind of funky. Let's not go with this. Let us go with uh, nine over five. Okay, let us go with nine over five. Once again, this right here is equal to, and now we need to be careful at this point. I mean. How often does 5 fit into 9? I mean one time, meaning we are going to get definitely a 1 here at, at the front. To be very precise, in the normal case, you would need to start everything off with a lot of decim, uh, a, a lot of digits before the decimal place and then infinitely many digits behind the decimal place. But we are going to suppose that we just need a D0 here, dot D1, blah, blah, blah. Meaning overall, multiplying both sides by 5 gives us that 9 must be equal to, and we are going to get um, 5 d0 plus and then we are going to get 0 0.5 d1 plus dot dot dot. Oh yeah, something over 5 is kind of easy. Um, I totally forgot about that. But this really doesn't take anything away from the point here um, being presented in, in the video. Now we are going to ask ourselves how often does d0 times 5 fit into our 9? I mean d0 must obviously be equal to 1. So we get something, so 9 over 5 is something of the form 1 dot. Now 0 dot 5 multiplied by d1, how often does it fit into, hmm, what is the remainder? I mean 9 minus 5 is going to give us 4. How often does 0 dot 5 fit into 4? I mean obviously 8 times. So we are going to get 1 dot 8, which should be the answer, I'm pretty certain about that. And you are going to notice since we fit everything into our none already, we don't need any of the other decimal places anymore, meaning all of those is going to be a repeating string of zeros at the very end. But no one writes these, okay? <laughs> this is just something that uh, no one uses in a normal case, um, zero repeating all the time. And this right here is the answer to nine over five. And this is the method explained that I was using in the How Real Man video. And if you want to learn more about things like number theory, digit expansions, algebra in general, then I invite you to try out the content of today's sponsor, bring into a kind enough to sponsor yet another video once again here on this channel. Now Brilliant is a very brilliant website, pun obviously intended, and I would like to present a few points to you why I really like Brilliant, how it is, and why it offers such a great content to their audience. Brilliant is an online learning platform and also app you can learn something new while being on the bus or walking around in the streets. Don't walk around with your phone in your hand on the streets, but you probably get the point. And you are going to get nearly 70 interactive courses at the palm of your hand if you use Brilliant. And these courses are going to be part of all topics STEM, be it mathematics that we did today, sciences like physics or chemistry, computer sciences, philosophy, and the list goes on and on. All of this is being offered by Brilliant and it's very awesome if you ask me. Awesome in the sense that their interactive learning concept is a one of a kind on the internet. If you want to learn something new about the things that we did today, for example, digit expansions, number theory and the combinatorics behind it, then you're going to prep yourself the course about number theory or maybe competitive mathematics. Really depends on where you find stuff like this over on Brilliant. 
Then you are going to start off really slowly with a few introductory topics and the list goes on. You are going to continue growing in your experience in this topic up until you reach a certain level where you can solve even harder problems with the basics you have learned at the start and during the process. And all of these concepts are going to be supported by stunning visuals. They, they are seriously stunning. Interactive content, things that you can drag around, pictures that look just absolutely amazing and animations which are going to make the concepts way more clear to you. And all of this and way more new courses coming each and every month can be found over on Preint and I seriously recommend everyone who wants to learn something new to try out Preint for themselves. And if this feels like something for you, I invite you to try it out using the link at the top of the description preint.org slash flambelmass. You are going to get free access to a portion of Preint already, big portion actually, but the first 200 people to actually make use of the link at 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a fantastic deal if you ask me. So much content over there. Life times worth you're never going to run out on new content ever again if you go with brilliant so definitely make sure and try it out and support the channel this way if you enjoyed this little uh, complimentary video on my Hakuruma Chuck Pro, this is the end of my life then make sure to support the channel on patreon such that I can buy myself new Chuck because it's breaking all the goddamn time <sighs> <laughs> and other than that, don't forget to check out Stemmer to you and other than the next video, I'll see you guys on Flamble Day. Ciao, <laughs> please stay safe.